Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. Today we will finally find out about the kernel trick. So let's get started. So here we've got the Gaussian or the radial basis function kernel and those are two interchangeable terms. And now let's have a look at this uh, function. So K stands for kernel and it's the function, a function applied to two vectors, the x vector. So this is a just a some sort of point in our data set and L stands for landmark. I means um, there might be several landmarks, but we're going to we're not going to wor worry about I for now. We're just going to look at this as a landmark. And then that equals to an exponent in the power of minus the the double vertical lines mean the dif distance between X and uh, the landmark squared divided by two sigma squared. So I know this might all seem very confusing right now, and uh, you're probably wondering, Kirill, this makes no sense whatsoever. What does this uh, even mean? Well, let's explore this through a visual example. So here I've got uh, an image which represents this particular function for a specific sigma, um, for a specific landmark. Uh, but this is what it looks like uh, in a... Uh, when you visualize it. And so what's happening here is uh, we've got L, the landmark, is actually in the middle of this um, plane. So in the middle of this two-dimensional space, uh, let's imagine this is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate, in the middle we've got 0, 0, and that's where the landmark is actually located. And then uh, the vertical here, uh, the vertical axis, represents the result that we get when we calculate this, uh, for every other point on this uh, xy axis, on this xy field or plane, uh, if we take any other point, then uh, this the results of this calculation, so let's say uh, we put that point in here, and then we calculate the distance to the landmark, and then we square it, divided by 2 sigma squared, where sigma is some fixed parameter that we decided upon earlier, and then we uh, take the negative of that, and then we put the exponent into that power, then we get this result, and that's what it will look like. So let's uh, go through this step by step. Let's uh, look at the tip of this uh, visualization. It's right in the middle of this whole uh, x, y uh, plane. And so if you project that in back onto the plane, and the bottom you'll have the kernel. That's uh, the, or not the kernel, that's the uh, landmark. We're going to call it the landmark. That's where uh, the middle of this bottom square is, and that's from where we're measuring uh, the distance. So k, uh, this distance x minus l i, this distance that we're squaring here, it will be measured from that landmark. So let's uh, take a point and look at it. So there is a point. Um, it's somewhere on our plane. It's quite far away from the landmark. There's a distance. So we're taking that distance. We're squaring that distance, dividing it by two sigma squared, take it negative, and then we want to see what the result will be. And so um, how can we confirm that this visualization is actually indeed uh, aligned with uh, this formula? So it's pretty simple. Um, the distance here, let's assume it's quite large, right? So it's quite a large distance compared to some other points that are closer to the landmark. So basically the distance here is a large number. And if we take a large number and we square it, right, we get an even larger number. And then uh, we divide by 2 sigma squared. It's still, assuming it's still a large number, again, depends on the sigma, and we'll find out the role of sigma further down uh, in uh, this tutorial. But uh, assuming this is still a very large number, so you've got a very large number here, and then you're saying my negative, you're making it a negative, a very large but negative number. So if you take in an exponent and you put it into a power of very negative, a very large negative number, so e to the power of one, let's say minus a million, right, so, you know, just for argument's sake, or minus a thousand, what does that give us? That gives us a value very close to zero, so it's, um, it, it's basically equivalent to saying one divided by e to the power of a thousand, and that is a very, very small number, so that basically means when you're far away from the uh, landmark or from the center, you get pretty much zero on the vertical axis and which aligns with our image here. Now let's have a look at another uh, example. So this point is actually closer to 
the landmark. And here, if we measure the distance, it's quite small. So now if you take a small number, you square it, and you still have a small number, you divide by 2 sigma squared, you still have a small number, so you look at e to the power of minus uh, a small number. So let's say e to the power of minus, I don't know, like uh, point uh, or e to the power of minus um, 1, for example, or e to the power of minus 0, uh, 0 0.1. Uh, so that basically means, so this number is close to zero. It's, it's, uh, as you get closer to the landmark, the, this number gets closer to zero. So, and we know that e to the power of minus, uh, zero, minus 0 0.01, 0 0.0001, and so on. Basically, as you get close to zero, e to the uh, we get closer to e to the power of zero. And e to the power of zero is one. So basically, as you get closer to your landmark, this number over here, this number here gets uh, smaller and smaller and smaller, and this, uh, the whole right part over here converges to one, so it becomes bigger, 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 and you climb this hill up to the top, where you get to one in uh, at the very landmark itself, so when you exactly hit on the, la you hit the landmark, you get to the top, and so that is just a quick way of checking that this image is indeed uh, the kernel function that we're looking at, and um, wh why is this all useful? Why do we need this? Well, because we're going to use this kernel function to um, separate our data set, to build that decision boundary. So let's have a look. Uh, there is our two-dimensional space, right? And there's our x1, x2, just like we had here, x1, x2. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the landmark and put it somewhere in our... Um, in our among our da uh, data set and there's a whole methodology on how the machine learning algorithm when you implement it in R or Python or any other language how it does it and we're not going to go into detail on that because we're just focusing on the intuition but basically there's a way to find a, an optimal placement for these landmarks and so the landmark is placed and next what happens is uh, the distance as you can see here the circle the circumference around this um, uh, kernel function is actually projected here onto our visualization. So um, what this circumference allows us to do is it allows us to um, take all of the points that are within that circumference and have them uh, like assign them a value of above zero. So anything outside the circumference, all of this blue stuff, so basically all these red points, they'll get a value of zero, right? If you apply this function or a value very, very close to zero. If, uh, on the other hand, any point falls within the circumference based on this function, it'll get a value of above zero. And that is how we can separate the two classes, the green from the red. Just uh, if we pick the right sigma, so here we know that uh, sigma actually um, well, we don't know that yet, but what uh, sigma's role is that it defines how wide this circumference is. So if you increase sigma, the circumference will increase. Like this picture didn't change, but it just it should change. It, uh, the circumference here would increase and you'd take more of a space up. Um, or if you decrease sigma, the circumference will decrease and therefore um, you'll take less points. And so basically f by finding the right sigma, you can... Um, set up the correct uh, kernel function to um, assign zero values to all of the points that you don't want in your classification and values above zero to the points that you do want in your classification. And that will allow you to um, separate the two. That will allow you to classify uh, each one. And that, in essence, is the kernel trick. We have created a decision boundary without actually going into a higher dimensional space, without having to um, project all of our, or create a mapping function uh, that's going to, um, you know, take us to the dimensional space and do all the computation. The point is we're not doing the computations in the higher dimensional space. We're still doing the computations in the lower dimensional space. Yes, we have this um, visual representation that involves a higher dimensional space. But at the same time, if you look at the, uh, computational part, uh, we were just calculating this formula and then we we're saying if this is greater, if, if this is equal to zero, 
then assign you know class red if this is greater or equal to uh, greater than zero then assign class green if we if you look at the computation is actually happening in still in the two-dimensional space and that's called the kernel trick so all of a sudden you can adjust your um, decision boundary and, and it's nonlinear and moreover you find yourself being able to solve much harder much more complex uh, problems like this for example so here this is a much it's a very simplified formula but if you take two kernel functions you just add them up in in reality they have to be coefficients theta here theta here and then another theta before uh, so they have to be coefficients with these um with the kernel formula it's a bit more complex than that but in simple terms if you take two kernel functions and you just add them up then because the um, the value of this function if let's say this is kernel uh, or this is your uh, landmark one because the value of the function when you get f further away it becomes zero right they don't really interfere so as you move away from this landmark so this landmark will only uh, encapsulate all of these points around here and then as you move away this will be zero everywhere right everywhere else including in these points but then this one will be non-zero close to this landmark and so if you just add them up you will get non-zero values for exactly all of those points and so therefore you can draw a non-linear decision boundary which even looks like this and the formula here would be uh, the point is assigned to the green class when this equation is greater than zero and the point is assigned to a red class when this uh, equation is equal to zero now again this is a very simplified example in reality uh, this is uh, a bit different it's greater or equal to zero this is less than zero and that's because we have the coefficients and um, it is a bit more of a uh, complex more of complex mathematics behind it but we don't really need to go into those depths the point is that we understand here that we can create this non-linear uh, very complex decision boundary without having to go into a higher dimensional space everything is still happening in those same dimensions simply because we're applying the kernel functions and that is why this method is called the kernel trick i hope you enjoyed this explanation and i look forward to seeing you next time until then happy analyzing